Hello, 911. I'd like to report an assault. Is the suspect still there? Yeah, he's still here. What up, you two? Welcome back to the Average Josh Podcast. And today we'll be discussing the Virgil Ortiz Jr. versus Mike McKinnison fight. Man, the one thing that I can say about this fight is that it was not much of a fight. It was more of an ass whooping. You know, Michael McKinnison got knocked out and everybody was expecting it, even me. In my prediction video, I even said that I expected Virgil Ortiz to get his timing down by the fourth round, come in with a, a lot of aggression, and be able to stop Michael McKinnison by the sixth. Now, Michael McKinnison, um, Michael McKinnison he is a very good fighter. He's a very good fighter. He has solid, great fundamentals. He has good footwork. In the beginning of the fight, he came to fight. I knew what everybody else knew was that Virgil Ortiz Jr. is just one of the greatest talents in the World Tour Division right now coming up. And the, his talent level was just way too much for Michael McKinnison to, to overcome. Now when the fight initially started, Michael McKinnison, he did come to fight. He did exactly what he was supposed to do and he, start, and he went right at Virgil Ortiz to establish himself. I like the swag that Mike McKinnison has. You can see when he was like, or Michael McKinnison, you can see that in the lead up to the fight, he didn't seem nervous at all. He was walking with a certain type of swagger. He had confidence, he had everything that you would think that he would need, you know, just from the eye test to really be prepared for Virgil Ortiz Jr. But when he got into the ring, he started initially going at Virgil Ortiz Jr. He saw that there was just a huge disparity in talent. Virgil Ortiz Jr., he has a high guard. He's similar to Earl Spence, where he can effectively use that high guard to parry punches and also counter punches so that he's able to stalk his prey. He usually starts out by parrying the punches, throwing his jab, parrying the punches, throwing his jab, throwing some um, shots to the body and really good angles and getting really good leverage on the shot so that you can really feel it and he's super hyper athletic and he has very, very hard punches. Then after a while, you know, which as I expected during the um, fourth um, round, he really started to um, get Michael McKinnison's timing down. And when he did, he really turned up the aggression. And once he turned up the aggression, I would say from the from the fourth to the ninth round is when McKinnison's corner threw in the towel. That was a straight that was a straight up ass whooping. McKinnison, he did have his moments. He'd be throwing his jab, getting Virgil Ortiz Jr. He'd also be throwing some combinations. But unlike when George Cambosis fought Devin Haney, Virgil Ortiz knew exactly what to do when he had an opponent that had a really good jab. He decided to just plot forward, parry with his hands, throw his jab as well, and, tr and go shot for shot. But unfortunately for McKinnison, when you decide to go shot for shot with Virgil Ortiz Jr., that, that man, like that man is literally bringing a cannonball to a pillow fight. Like McKinnison would be in there jabbing him, throwing combinations, and Virgil Ortiz would just walk right through that and throw his own shots. And I'm telling you, the, and the shots that were coming from Virgil Ortiz hurt way more than any of the shots that McKinnison were throwing. So over time, like a sledgehammer, slamming against the cement pavement. Ortiz just kept banging and banging and banging and banging away until there was literally nothing left of McKinnison but a pile of dust. And his corner did what they were supposed to do and stopped the fight before that man took irreparable damage. But although it wasn't much of a um, competitive fight, I will say that it was an entertaining fight. All of Virgil Ortiz's fights are entertaining because he has a 100% knockout percentage and he really comes to fight. Also, his opponent, McKinnison, really came to fight as well. He didn't just fold over. He really did everything in his power to stay in that fight. He really tried to establish himself early. He really had confidence. It kind of reminded me of the Spence versus Ugas fight. Where you, um, where you saw Ugas come in there with a lot of confidence, really wanted to put on for his country, and he was actually having some success against Errol Spence, even managing to like rock him a little bit when Errol Spence lost his focus and actually spit out his mouthpiece. Um, but then once Errol Spence actually found his range and really kind of got aggressive and going in on Ugas, he broke him down just like Ortiz did to McKinnison. 
And as you can see um, by their faces at the end, the result was basically the same. You have movable forces just breaking down two men in a ring. But with that being said, man, the fight was entertaining. I really want to see what Virgil Ortiz is going to do next. Um, I know that he's with the zone, so it may be hard for him to negotiate a fight with someone like Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford or Jerron Ennis. But I would love to see any of those guys fight each other. I know that they say he's a young fighter, he's a prospect, he's up and coming, he has a lot to learn, which that is, all those things are true. But they say the same thing about Errol Spence when he was fighting special K, Kell Brook. And when he actually got the fight with Kell Brook after everybody avoided him, you saw that he became that transcendent talent. And I'm not saying that Virgil Ortiz um, technically has what it takes at this moment to beat a Errol Spence, to beat a Terrence Crawford, to beat a Jerron Ennis. But we'll never know until they fight. And I think that he has every tool that he needs in his toolbox to make those fights competitive. And honestly, seeing, and honestly, seeing him um, and Jerron Ennis come up around the same time, really, um, who does that really remind you of, huh? Who does that remind you of? You got one guy who's uh, very hyper-athletic, very gifted fighter who can switch from orthodox to southpaw. And then you have another fighter who's plotting forward, who has very sound defense, who is also hyper-athletic, also very strong, also gets very good angles, also has a good jab. You know, does that remind you of anybody? You know, does that, does that, does that kind of remind you of anybody? So it's exciting to think about. And like I would say, it doesn't matter if it's like Jerron versus Crawford or Tease versus Spence or Spence versus Crawford. At this point, I'm willing to take whatever we can get. Everyone wants to talk about Spence and Crawford, Spence and Crawford, Spence and Crawford. And Errol Spence is by far, out of anyone in boxing, him and Deontay Wilder are my favorite fighters, even though Deontay Wilder lost. I don't care. I just like that that guy comes out there and he is always willing to fight and he pushes for big fights. Um, but even if that fight doesn't come to fruition, I just want to see Earl Spence fight, man. I just want to see him fight. I want to see him fight someone who can really push him to his limits physically. And I think that Virgil Ortiz can do that. Now, I'm not saying Virgil Ortiz is like the same fighter. I think that Spence does have a better jab. I think that Spence is better at fighting off the back foot. I think that Spence does have some things that he's better than Virgil Ortiz has, but they have a lot of the same similar strengths. And oftentimes when Spence is literally in the ring with someone who has like a strength that he has, um, such as when he was fighting Sean Porter, and Sean Porter really wanted to bang on the inside, Spence will usually accept that invitation and go in there head first with the guy. So I can only imagine what it would be like if him and Virgil Ortiz were just right up against each other, just boom, 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 banging it out. Like, honestly, I damn near would like COVID to come back just so that they could empty out their arena and put a microphone up there so that we could just really hear those two guys just beating the hell out of each other. Like, I couldn't even imagine those sounds that we would hear, man. Speaking of sounds, another thing that I really liked about the zone fights, um, is I like how they I like how you can hear the ref's instructions more. Like they they put a microphone on the ref and you're really able to hear everything that the ref is saying. And um, also when he's up close to the fighters, you can even hear what the fighters are saying. So I really like that as well. But overall, I would say that um, today was a pretty good day in boxing. You got Blair Cobbs and Maurice Hooker coming in. You know my guy Cobbs, um, even though Earl doesn't like him managed to um, pull it through with the win and Maurice Hooker woods a little bit but I thought hopefully he gets better soon and I got to see Virgil Ortiz Jr. assault the man for essentially five rounds because after that fourth round man it was just a it was a complete ass whooping but that's all I really got to say about that and I'm out